Yo, Elliot, when I have certain discussions with my girlfriend, she claims that I can be cold, logical, unempathetic, and that I only care about the people in my small circle of friends and family. I do want to connect with people better for my social and work life. How important is this skill and how do I go about it? Well, the very first thing I want to do is, uh, is to assure you that there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, and that you don't need to apologize or change your ways because your girlfriend doesn't like it. Uh, in fact, she would probably resent you if you started behaving more like a girl. And that's what she's asking you to do because it is very masculine to be cold slash detached, right? That's, that's, a, that's a uniquely masculine trait. It's something anybody could do, but it comes a little bit more natural to a man to be detached. Women are usually more attached. They're attached to people. They're attached to things. They're attached to circumstances. Um, they hold on longer, right? They're more emotionally involved. Nothing wrong with that. It's just the way it is. But for a man, it's, it's, it's very natural in it, when we're living in our natural state in a natural world, unlike today where men behave and think more like women, you're demonstrating a very masculine trait. And it's probably a part of the reason why she's attracted to you. So it's important to never really listen to what a woman says and to watch her actions. And so dealing with this first part as it relates to your girlfriend, never argue with her, never apologize with her, never even feel the need to have to answer her when she says you're being cold, illogical, and unempathetic. Uh, just sit with that. Just hear her out, sit with it, and say, hmm, okay, interesting. Hmm. hmm. But do not apologize. Do not feel bad about yourself. Do not try to change your ways at all. I'm going to give you something to think about and some things that you can use, tools, but do not, do not go changing your detachment, your logical, unempathetic. And here's the thing about the, this word empathy. It has been really weaponized and bastardized in our day. Empathy is not what it's all cracked up to be. There's a big difference between having compassion for someone, uh, sympathy for someone, uh, and being empathetic. And I, those words are used interchangeably, but they're not. Someone who's compassionate or empath or, or um, the other word I use, you know, concerned about other people, they have a healthy form of detachment when dealing with a, a person that is suffering. There is this idea that if you're down in a ditch, right, the, I can't help you if I go down in that ditch with you, right? If I am being compassionate, I can see that you're suffering, you're down in that hole, but I'm not going to get down in that hole with you. I, I, I may offer you a rope. I may offer you some ideas. I can make some offerings from my position, not in the hole, that can help you get out of the hole. This idea of empathy, if I could do it justice with this analogy, is getting down into the hole with someone, being in that emotional state with someone. Empathy is taking on the emotional state of the person that you're being empathetic with. And that's a, it's a uniquely feminine trait uh and to be empathetic in that way is uniquely unmasculine it, it, it's 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 not in our it's not in our general nature to get emotional with people who are emotional you may see girls do this sometimes like maybe a girl broke up with her her boyfriend broke up with her and then the other girls will come around and cry with her right she'll cry and then the other ones will they'll take on her pain this is to, we, female women do this because they're primary caregivers of children. And in order for them to be good caregivers of children, they have to be empathetic. Oh, the child is crying, right? The child is crying. Sometime a man will hear a child crying and they'll just be like, shut that baby up, right? But a woman will hear a baby crying and she'll go, oh, oh, oh. And she'll get very empathetic and she'll, she'll feel the pain in that child's cry, right? So... There's nothing wrong with it, but what she's doing is, is, and what a lot of women do, and a lot of men go along with it because we've forgotten sexual polarity, is she's trying to make you a girl. She's trying to make you more like her. And the worst thing a man can do is follow a woman's lead when she's trying to make you more like her. Women don't understand men, and, and men, men and women have a hard time understanding each other. It's okay. We don't need to understand each other, nor do we need to be like each other. We need to respect each other as we are. Being cold, I say detached, 
being cold, logical, and unempathetic is a, is a strength. It's a, it's, a, it's a good trait for men to have so that we can what? So we can remain stoic in the face of challenges. If you become too warm and you become too emotional, right? The opposite of cold is warm and you become too opposite of logical is emotional and then you start becoming empathetic not just emotional but empathetic meaning i'm starting i'm starting to take on the emotions of other people you're not a man you're not demonstrating the polarity the, the polar effect of how a woman would behave right so because there's so much gender confusion in our world she doesn't know what she's doing and you just need to be patient with her and say, okay, all right, I hear you, hear her out, maybe give her a hug and ask her, oh, is this warm? I'm being warm now, I'm giving you a hug. Mm -hmm. Wanna go get warmer? Let's go into the sheets, right? Tease her, make, make light with her, but do not take her seriously. Do not take the things that she's saying seriously because she'll sabotage you and then you're gonna start acting like a girl and then she's, gonna, she's not gonna be attracted to you anymore and she's gonna say, oh, I don't know what happened. We, I no longer have uh, feelings for you anymore. I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore. All that kind of bullshit. All that comes about when a man starts taking on the nature of a woman because she's asking her to, asking him to, and then she, then the polarity is shot. So it'll destroy your relationship if you if you take her advice. <laughs> Don't tell her that. Say I love you, and then walk away. <laughs> he says, and that I only care about people in my small circle of friends and family. Again, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. In fact. Once again, it's very masculine. The, 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 the nature of man through the, the, the ruggedness and strength of our body places us in a unique place, a unique, unique space, right? A unique responsibility, and that is to protect what's inside the boundaries. Men set boundaries and protect what's inside the boundaries. Women open boundaries and you know, they're receivers of what's on the outside. Men are protectors of what's on the inside. Uh, I know this to be a fact, and I know that I was a beta male when I was a kid because my dad would always say this. My dad would always say, we, had a, we were the only neighborhood, only house in the neighborhood that had a chain link fence around it. We were on a corner, right? And all the other houses had free open yards. My dad saw it fit to put a fence around our house. And as I grew up and he would talk about raising his family in this house, he would say, I put that fence up so that I know what my priorities are. Anything on this side of the fence is 100% my responsibility. It is my, my authority over it. And it, this, is, this is where I put my effort and focus. If I could do something for someone on the outside of that fence, because I have extra or because my heart is calling me to, because my dad is actually a, a, a very loving guy, but he knows his priorities and he knows his boundaries. That's secondary. Outside the fence is secondary. I think every man needs to think this way. Every man needs, it's, a, it's again, it's a uniquely masculine way to think uh, in terms of boundaries and protecting the boundaries, right? When we were um, nomadic or maybe living on the land more, right? Tribal culture, right? Not that I've ever been there, but we've got anthropologists to tell us about it. It was the women that stayed in, close close in, where they would be with the other women, they would be with the children, and they'd be cultivating relationship and love and harmony all within the inside, right? Particularly with the other women and children. The men would protect the, the parameter. Men would see if there was somebody else trying to get in to corrupt, to hurt, to steal, to take advantage of, to rape and pillage what we have on the inside. And so we're, we're, we're created, we're uniquely uh, armed with the tools, be mindset and physically, to protect our small circle of friends and family, right? So once again, I'm just, I'm siding with you and I don't, in other words, I want to encourage you to not think poorly of yourself. You're doing the right thing. These are all awesome things. Now, there can be, there can be some flexibility, and this is, what, this is what you need to hear. You say, I do want to connect with people better for my social and work life. How important is this skill and how to go about it? Let's break that down. The first thing you say is, I want to connect with people better for my social and work life. So this is, this is another one that goes against 
popular Disneyfied gynocentric thinking that the world has descended into. Not everybody is worth being in your life. In fact, if someone is not bringing something to the table in your life, there's no reason for them to be there. Make no useless friends. Right? I get it. We've been taught, oh, everybody should be included. Everybody's important. Open your heart to everyone. Inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. Inclusion is, first of all, is very feminine, right? It's, it's, it's uniquely feminine in this regard, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying that women are more apt to inclusion. Men are more apt to discernment. Men are more standoffish because I don't know you. I can't trust you. You have to demonstrate why I should trust you and why I should come to know you before you get inside my circle. Women, a lot of times, just their nature, they're susceptible. Women are open. They're, that's why they're vulnerable. Women are more vulnerable than men. I know people don't like to hear that, but just by very nature of their physiology, they're vulnerable. They've got an opening in their body, right? We have a sword. They have an opening. But even their whole attitude, their whole demeanor is very receptive, right? It's very receptive. Uh, but when a man receives anyone in his life, and this, um, this is my advice to you, I think you know this based on how you put this question together, but when a man receives someone in his life, it's not, it's not because it's a nice thing to do. I don't, like I said, the, you make no useless friends. It's because that person serves a purpose in my life. How can I phrase, I'm going to phrase this in a very rough way, in a very, in a, in a very uh, hard way, but you don't need useless friends. You don't need useless people. People come into your life because you can use them. I know I sound like a psychopath, but if you have no use in my life, why are you here? What are you doing here? Right? You can't help me. You can't protect me. You, we can't do things together. We can't build together. What is the purpose for you in my life? And you have to ask yourself that because there are going to be people that have a legitimate purpose for you in your life. There are people that are, and maybe sometimes you don't even know that this person will have a purpose in your life, but you, what I'm going to tell you now is you maintain lines of communication, but you still maintain boundaries. You say, I want to connect with people better for my social and work life. Good. If they're not better for your work and social life, don't invite them in. You say, how important is this skill and how do I go about it? Well, you got to ask yourself, number one, why? Why? Why am I bringing these people into my life? Why do I need to bring people into my life? And if you say for your social and work life, then you need to be around people that are going to enhance your social and work life, whatever that looks like. I don't know what that is for you. But when we join mastermind groups, when we join uh, industry organizations, when we join business organizations, when we join social clubs that have a purpose, well, then you're going to be around people that can add specifically to where you are looking for support in your social and work life. Don't just be social with people for being social with people. You be social with a specific genre of people because those people add value to your life. Last week, we were talking about one of our friends was uncomfortable speaking with other men about firearms because it seems the other guys knew a lot about guns and he didn't. Well, those are social contacts. Those are people that you want to be around because they're going to teach you more about what you need to know and they know it. So there are like firearm hunting clubs and shit like that, like... Uh, I know, remember in St. Pete, they had like clay shooting. There's a clay shooting club. These guys would get together, they clay shoot, and they'd probably learn from each other. They would talk shop. They would. Me, here's another thing that's uniquely masculine that needs to be important. Men bond by doing things together. Women bond by speaking with each other. Did you know that? Men bond with most tightly with men that they're doing something with. Working on a car together, working on a, on a, on a farm together, working on firearms training together, lifting in the gym together. There, there's no male bond. There's no real male bond if there's not something to attack together, something that we're doing together. And of course, there'll be hierarchy. He knows how to do it better than me. That's why I'm here listening to him, something like that. 
but you got to get around people that that fill that criteria what am i learning what am i getting what are we doing here together and of course you say work life well work life is all about doing men bond by doing things together that's how you that's how you meet other men for your social and work life what are we doing together and i'm not talking about slap dicking right drinking smoking weed you're smoking buddies you're drinking buddies watching football together that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about men that get together to do something so for example one of the things that i'm i'm heavily considering being involved more involved with here in my county is something called uh florida freedom keepers florida freedom keepers is about medical freedom in Florida. And they're an organization that helps push legislation, that helps support certain uh, um, representatives that work for medical freedom in Florida. And my wife has been involved with it. And when I go to these meetings, I'm the only guy there. I'm usually one of the only men there. There are a few handful of husbands that's run all by women, right? And you can see how topsy-turvy the world has come. And I ask myself, where are all the men? Where are all the men? And so I, I may take it upon myself to create a men's group for the Florida Freedom Keepers uh, because I know that, number one, men get things done when they get together with a common cause, right? Not to say that the women can't. The women are doing a great job. They're the only ones doing anything because the men aren't. And also for solid bonding between men because we have a common enemy. We have a common goal. We have a common direction that we're working in and attacking, right? So you say, how do I go about part this? Uh, how do I go about this important skill? We're not talking skills here. We're talking about paradigm. We're talking about why. What's the big picture? That's the most important part. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You're just spinning your wheels, and you're trying to please your girlfriend. None of that's going to advance you in life. You got to decide what am I up to? What are who? Where are there other men that are up to the same thing? And how can we be together tackling this project right and it could be something as simple as like i said fixing a car together right one of my good friends and he and his dad they fix cars together that's how he and his dad bond since he was a teenager we, they just buy old cars and they work on it together right i started bonding with my brothers and my uncle and my dad and then later on with my clients and, and or, or the athletes that I played football with, all through lift, lifting. I bonded with you guys. Most of you here have come through my bonding with you through lifting because we're doing something together. Elliot's lifting and I'm, I want to lift too. And so you learn from me and I show you and we do it together, right? I'm not here to, 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 to pad your ego or pat your butt, right? Make you feel good about yourself. No, we're, we're, we got a task to fulfill. As far as skills are concerned, you know, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole too far, but there are some basic criteria for human interaction, for, for resourceful human interaction, right? A firm handshake, look someone in the eye when they're talking to you, when you're talking to them, listen closely without having to speak up right away, ask people questions, right? This is how, these are different tools and techniques that you may even find you may even find it by reading the classic book how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie uh, oh actually in fact nick nick mentioned that here nick thank you dale carnegie how to win friends and influence people that's a good book that has tactics right we're talking strategy we're talking big picture but if you need tactics that book is full of tactics what are tactics tactics are little tools that you use that support your strategy but you need a strategy, otherwise tactics are just dumb things that you're doing for no real reason. Why are you doing it? Why do you wanna connect with these people? Why? And then you can use some of the tactics in a book like that to help uh, sort of grease the groove in terms of communication with these uh, you know, other people. So that's my long-winded answer on that, dude. I hope that helps you. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.